Welcome back and Happy New Year! Today we are talking all about the color trends for 2022 and I've got one word for you baby. Green is back in a big way. That was more than one word. But anyway, green is the story of 2022. And I gotta tell you, the paint vendors have done some really amazing things with it. Some of it is great and some of it is super yicky. So let's go through and see what some of my favorites are. Many of you may have seen my video from last year and you kind of know that I really adore Benjamin Moore as a vendor because they always come up with great original colors along with people like Pharaoh and Ball. But their Benjamin Moore's October Mist is fantastic fantastic. It's a revised version of kind of a sage with less blue in it. So it's super soft, super relaxing, very zen-like. I don't typically like greens as such for use on walls, but I would totally rock this Benjamin Moore October Mist. Look at how beautiful it is in this bedroom wall or in this kind of like upstairs office. That's a beautiful one. It even mixes, as you can see, with this blue sofa with a lot of other tones. So it's a great building block green, which you don't see that often. So hats off to Benjamin Moore. They did a great job. Now, Sherwin-Williams also came up with a really great green for this year. It's called Evergreen Fog. Little richer, a little more grayish blue in it, but it's still a very good sort of a neutral soft green, which I think is absolutely stunning. It looks amazing in this entryway with wood tones and things. Just simply beautiful. It really, really is a nice complement to a lot of other tones and works as a good backdrop color, which often green does not. Now, Pharaoh and Ball for all of my guys over there in the UK and in Europe. We love it. We use it here too. But Pharaoh and Ball is kind of mm, the elderly granddad of all major color stories. And their breakfast green number 81. Woo! This thing is absolutely beautiful. And you can see it. I love how they blended it in with this soft kind of minerally blue, which is great. Or even this kind of Turkish red on the ceiling. That's fantastic. I love this color. And they've blended it with a couple of other tones that are coming in for this new year in their story that we're going to talk about as well. But the green from them is amazing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of oh, sour notes with the new introductions. I think that Glidden's, what they're calling guacamole, oh, okay, now I actually like avocados, but I like to eat them. I do not want to be in a room with them. So avocado, it's way too yellow. It's way too harsh, it's super sharp on things. They call it zesty. I'm not sure I would use that term with it. And I think it would be bad as a choice for almost any place. So I think it's kind of got to go the way of the Farrah Fawcett posters taped up on the walls with blue tape. We're not going to do that version of 70s reprise again. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about green and kind of how it works with us. Green as a color, you know, we respond emotionally and subconsciously to colors. And green as a color, the right green, calms us down and emotionally creates kind of a sense of groundedness with nature. It's very, very good to have a space that you can have that has green in it. It reminds us, like I said, of nature. It's very, very uh, nurturing as a color. But the thing that you have to remember with green is it is actually really tricky to use in your interior spaces. Now, why is that? Because light reflected off of green walls, and it doesn't matter whether or not it's like a really good green or that yicky avocado, but when green light reflects onto skin, people tend to look pallid, pale, and really not healthy. So what's your pro tip on using green for walls? Keep it out of bathrooms because you do not want to wake up in the morning and look like this in the bathroom mirror and go, oh my gosh, I can't go to work today. This is terrible. Actually, maybe you do, <laughs> but you do not want to use it in bathrooms because it doesn't work to try and get the overall palette for 
skin colors the right way. So put it in a lot of other places. Love it for entryways. L look at it in this living room with the, over the fireplace. That's fantastic. You know, a dining nook. Uh, you know, it's great in a lot of different spaces, but keep it out of the bathrooms. Okay, guys, now here's your New Year's resolution. If you are liking the tips and find what I talk about in our, my videos helpful, please, please, please subscribe because it means a huge, huge amount to our channel. It really helps us be able to do more things that give you guys more solutions to your design dilemmas every day. So hit that bell, bang that button or whatever it is so that you can be notified every time I drop a video. And I'd love it if you'd comment down below. That always helps me out as well. All right, guys, enough of that. Let's talk about the rest of the palette for 2022 because it's important for you to know. So understand that the whole shift for 2022 is actually a story that builds on the major palette shift that occurred in 2021. So you can see here with the two palettes lined up against each other that they really do blend well and nicely together. There's some additional kind of warm whites that are sort of brought in that work really well. I love the idea of the rosy peach from 2021 softening out to something called wildflower for 2022. That's a beautiful kind of a soft shift. There's also these very sort of sexy, deep midnight, almost a navy tone that came out in 2022 called Mysterious. That's absolutely beautiful. Obviously, there's a big story with the greens. There's a really nice kind of a, almost an aubergine kind of a darkened black eggplant with Amazon soil that happened in 2021 that's kind of carried through in the mix of Venetian portico in 2022. So there's a lot of blending. And what that means to you is that if you painted something from maybe a Jean Teal from last year, you don't have to repaint. That's the whole beauty of it. All of these kind of build together and you can maybe add something in that kind of works with that. So you're not out of luck, you're in luck. Now, I wanna just show you two colors that are just, ooh, became my favorites right away for 2022. And the first one is Pharaoh and Ball's Babouche. Oh my God, it's a most wonderful yellow. And yellows are tricky, just like greens. You have to be careful that they don't go too sour, too mustardy, too muddy. Oh, Pharaoh and Ball's Babouche is fabulous. It's a go-to for me for this year. Second one that I absolutely adore is this Benjamin Moore Mysterious. Woo! It's like a midnight navy gray. It could be blended with these greens, with the yellows, with the warm whites. All of this is really great. Has a little bit of a flinty note to it, which actually works in with a lot of different style statements and things. So you've got a lot to choose from for 2022. So guys, so that's the green story for 2022, which I'm going to absolutely love seeing everybody use and interpret in a way that works for them. Now, guys, if you wanna know more about how to develop your design trend for you, you definitely wanna check out the Design Club right down there. It's linked down below. You don't want to miss out on that. We go into all kinds of things that will solve your design dilemmas for this year. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go over to this video, which is painting like a pro. Oh my God, it'll answer all kinds of questions and how to pick pink colors. And I'll see you guys next week.